Director David Gordon Green's Halloween, the reboot sequel that directly connects to John Carpenter's original film and retcons the many less awesome follow-ups that came after it, featured an ending that finally gave Laurie Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, the closure she'd sought for 40 years, while keeping Michael Myers' fate relatively open for interpretation. But Halloween almost concluded on a much different note. Obviously, if you've come this far in the video, you should know, spoilers for the 2018 Halloween, ahead. By the end of the film, Laurie, her daughter Karen, and her granddaughter Allison trap Michael inside Laurie's basement, then set the entire house ablaze. It'd have been safe to assume Michael would be burnt to a crisp, until the film cut back to the flame-filled basement that now appeared to be Michael-free. Fans who stayed through the credits heard his breathing just before the lights went up, which further signaled that he may have made it out of the fire alive. But an early version of the film saw things play out differently. In a May 2017 script draft posted to Twitter, Lori, Allison, and Karen, originally named Shanna, come together outside Lori's house, where Lori engages in a one-on-one -on -one battle with Michael. Rather than a game of cat and mouse that ends up with Michael locked in the basement, the alternate ending sees Lori and Michael getting into a knife fight outside. Lori's luck against Michael runs out when he drives a knife into her chest. She swings her own knife and slices his arm. Here's where Karen slash Shanna enters the scene, slowly opening the front door armed with a high-tech crossbow. After Michael twists the knife further, forces Lori to the ground, and then pulls the blade out, Lori's daughter shoots Michael in the chest. At least that's what we can assume happened. There's a page missing from the Halloween script that was shared on social media. Next, we see Lori's daughter and granddaughter flagging down a pickup truck, loading Lori in it, and pulling away with the unnamed driver seemingly in search of a hospital, somewhat similarly to the way the final cut of the film ends. The script then cuts to a dark forest, where Michael staggers through the trees as he yanks an arrow out of his chest. He ends up standing among the shattered artificial faces of mannequins, likely a reference to the area of Lori's property where she and her daughter held target practice, which we saw in the film. He then walks to a tree and sits down, touches the wounds in his chest, and looks at his missing fingers, all while breathing laboriously. As the script notes, he's exhausted and possibly taking his final breath. Compared to how Halloween actually ended, Lori, Karen, and Allison having survived and only Michael's ultimate fate left ambiguous, this original conclusion would have featured Lori and Michael both on the brink of death. Pretty thrilling and more than enough room for a sequel, right? So why didn't they go with this version? Two words, test audiences. The filmmakers held reshoots after test audiences made it known that they didn't like the ending very much. And as cool as a knife fight and crossbow scene would have been, it's hard not to agree. Sure, the original ending sounds pretty solid in most regards, but it was probably a good thing that it was changed for the final cut. Imagine it, Lori anxiously awaiting Michael's return for 40 years, training and raising her daughter to fight and kill him, to the point where the authorities had to take her away, only to be stabbed and left bleeding in the back of a pickup truck? That would have been a massive bummer. With critics and fans having highly praised Halloween, and the flick raking in hundreds of millions of dollars at the global box office, it's all but inevitable that we haven't seen the last of Michael, Lori, Karen, and Allison. Maybe Lori will still get to have that knife fight, and Karen will hoist the crossbow for another moment of utter badassery in the possible sequel? A horror fan can only hope.